your girl Dizzy the host for what you got to say. Of course, you know we got our crazy co-hosts in the building. What's up, Mr. Tyrone Gregory? Hey, pushing positivity, love and love. What's up, Miss Keela Mahogany? Hey, y'all. <laughs> Mr. Cabana Black. I'm that dude. Miss Cool Candice. What up? Time to chop it up. And of course, we have a special guest in the building today, Mr. Vance, CEO of GMLA, Grinding My Life Away, the movement, not just the company. What's up, Mr. Vance? Hey, chilling, chilling. What's happening? All right, all right. So what we want to talk about today is Black businesses and Black business etiquette. Of course, since the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, we have seen an, a significant increase in buy black, support black, support black businesses, give black people your dollars, show them what our dollar is worth. But we want to kind of dig a little bit deeper into that to answer some questions that everyone's typing and talking about on Facebook, but no one's having a real conversation about. So you might hear some things that you can learn from. You might hear some things that you don't like. But at the end of the day, as long as we got it out of the table, when we know better, we're going to do better, right? Right. right. Now, on the screen right now, how many of us right here right now are black business owners? All right. So out of all of us on the screen, how many of us have been black business consumers? OK, good. So we can both all kind of talk on both sides of something. So that's good. Everybody's got something to bring to the table. So the first question that I would like to pose is, why do we now have a surge in black business and buying from black businesses? And why haven't we been consistent the, since the last time that there was a surge in the buy black movement? Anybody can start. Be, before I speak, may I ask one question? Of course. Because I, I do comedy. So my business is comedy and I am black. Does that make me a black business owner? <laughs> do you own yourself? I do. Then I believe that you're a black business owner. <laughs> yes, oh, you are. Speaking from both sides. There you go. You can speak from both sides. Okay. So now, please repeat your question. Okay. Why the surge now, and why have we not been consistent in, since the last buy black surge? Okay. Now, the surge now is because people are starting to see that you know the protests are happening so much and things like that and that's starting to i guess enrage people but it's starting to make people educate each other more that right there is the big the biggest plus in my mind anyway people are educating each other more you know a lot of people the, the first big surge was because they educated themselves Mm -hmm. They went out and learned what to do. That's why we had Black Wall Street. That's Well, that's why Black Wall Street was what it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma anyway. Because once the slaves, you know, were, you know, released and everything, and they got educated and educated themselves and, and became business owners, and they got those dollars rotating between themselves, and they got so successful you know, they learned what to do. Then, of course, supremacists, white supremacists came in. They didn't like that. They tore it down, tore it down with, you know, force. Mm -hmm. Now, that scared a lot of black people to want to do it again. Okay. So once black people started to try to do it again, what they do, they come in and they tear it down. It created a lot of fear. So it created fear for black people to want to shop with other black people to create that dollar going. Jewish people didn't get scared. Hell, Islamic people, if you go in Michigan right now, ride down, I think it's Dearborn, it's a whole street full of nothing but Islamic people, Muslim people, rotating their dollar together. And they have no problem doing it, none. But it's a fear. It's a fear is what's causing people not, black people not to come together and spend that dollar together. But then they also, and when I say they, I just, I have to say just the, the white supremacists of the world 
creating that fear and black people to come together. They didn't they did made it to the point where we hate on each other to even come together at times. So you're saying that we're not consistent because of fear? That's what I feel. Okay. Not only fear, I mean, it's other things. Because at the same time, why am I going to get mad? Because I'm selling shoes, but you selling shoes too. So now you selling shoes, and I'm going to get mad and, and, and get mad at you and and do something to you just so I can make more money. Like, that that's kind of what it feels like out here. Okay. I think that it's a layered issue, just like anything that is in our community. Um, when I did the interview, one of the things that I said was, um, they allow us to be one dimension. And when I say us, me, even us, allow us to be one dimension. We accept one thing at a time. You know, I'm uh, multifaceted, I'm a business person, I'm an artist, you know, a motivational speaker, all these kind of things. And so that's a layered individual. And I feel in our community, we're still not accepting that we can do many things and be successful in them. And I think that in the past, the bridge was being built and the bridge got broken, it got destroyed. And I don't know if it's more fear, but feeling hopeless. A lot of times when you're hopeless, you kind of retreat and you go and follow things that work. You know, um, I think that being any kind of person that's in business, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of faith. And then when you're dealing with a society, America, that doesn't accept Black America, and they put us in a position where that faith is being challenged, your business mind is being challenged, you know, it's really hard. And so you lose hope. And I think because you're losing hope, we kind of retreat. But then the trend thing, we're very trendy, meaning like a surge of something will happen. And because we see numbers, it inserts hope. It inserts faith. So now you see a bunch of our black brothers and sisters coming together. So it's like, okay, I'll follow the trend. Right. And I think that it's very important that we have to educate ourselves that we're not supposed to be trendy. We're building back black power. We're building, building black equity. Mm. We need black real estate. We need to be able to um, not call it black anymore. And that's another thing that I've always said. The first um, black this, the first black that, that is really a problem. Um, so I think if anything for me as a business person, what I find myself personally dealing with is um, fighting against a broken people, which is my people. I feel like in, in with us, we have to prove ourselves to them because everything's like, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if you're going to make it because they're waiting for the rest of the world to approve it. Mm -hmm. And then when I go to the rest of the world, then they take us through the same challenge. So it's like a double whammy. And so what I see now is I, I'm not, I do agree that it's fear, but I think it's that feeling hopeless and having to do it over and over again. And instead of taking charge, you're like, you know what, what is going to make a difference anyway? And that is what I feel we have to attack the most is no matter what, you have to keep on going. Okay. I totally agree with what you said because at the end of the day, that's what I mean by that fear, bro. Because that fear is, it's, it's not even competing and trying to prove to the rest of the world. We got to prove to ourselves that we can actually do it. Mm -hmm. Like you, you got something? Not, say again. Me. Your sound is off. <laughs> I haven't formulated it all the way yet. Um, like it's developing because I, I, I think there are two things at hand. I look at um, this like a timeline, like I'm looking at America's timeline. And so where are we in that period of time? Where should our community be at this point in time with all the things that happened in the past? You know, where from when the first domino was put down, where are we in that, um, you know, that space? And so it's kind of, <clears throat> 
I often think that it's unfair when people put down black businesses because we are at the genesis of our like um that's why i said i'm still trying to develop it but it where people are just now gen first generations um are being becoming entrepreneurs they're getting their businesses right now you know learning about it right now they didn't have a mentor they didn't have funding they didn't have any of those things so without guidance how are you supposed to know what you're doing and there's going to be mishaps and there's going to be mm -hmm. mistakes that you have to learn from but let's say three generations from now like we have to start now because three generations from now they will be solid they will know right. they you know we are just we just happen to be those people that need to do it so that future black people can succeed okay. they got to learn from our mistakes okay. Candace? um so I agree with uh, what Cabana was saying that it's a layered issue. Um, I think the surge of um, everyone rushing to black businesses now is because people understand, um, I'm sorry, black people are becoming to the, are coming to the point where they understand that we get a reaction from more white folks when you affect their dollar and mm -hmm. by affecting their dollar you make them listen they when you can show the money when you can show the money trail when you can show that you're in the black and not in the red mm -hmm. they pay attention to that so when you have a business and they white black indian arabian whatever whatever business owner it is, you're paying attention to the numbers. You're paying attention to how much equity you're building in your business. And you're paying attention to how much money you're making and how much money you're able to invest back into your business. And, and if you can expand your business and things like that. So with the surge that's happening right now, it's based off of, okay, y'all want to keep killing us? That's cool. We don't like that shit. So what we're going to do is not only are we going to bond together and band together and stick up for ourselves, we're now going to stop um, patronizing your businesses. So we're going to start taking care of our own. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want to take care of us. Y'all don't want to help us. Y'all don't want to work with us. Y'all want to keep killing us like dogs in the street. Got it. Hey, Ray Ray, you and um, June bugging them. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That, uh, that Mr. Wiley been owning for the past 20 years and been struggling, but everybody been going to the 7-Eleven that, you know, maybe a white guy owns or maybe a, an Ar Arabian person or an Indian person owns. They're going to start going back to our, back to the hood. What it, uh, I can't remember who it has said it or so many people have said it, buy back the hood. Well, you have so many other ethnicities that have gone into the hood and have tried to do the whole gentrification and building it back up, but they take the dot the black dollar and they don't invest it back into the hood. They're using it to build themselves somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, if we do that for ourselves, we're able to to turn a new leaf. We're able to to create something for our children and for our grandchildren and for their children. Whereas right now we're helping ourselves. Well, I'm sorry, not right now, but whereas our parents' generation was was able to help themselves and barely help us. We're trying to pave a path for not just ourselves, but for our children and for their children and for their children. So if it means stop patronizing a lot of white businesses and start looking for those black business owners that, that make the same things, and that's going to create that whole um, we we keep our money circulated within ourselves. Then that's what it needs. Then that's what needs to happen. The you said surge, and then you said why, why haven't, we, haven't been we been consistent? So I don't think we've been consistent with it because our issue was pacified. They put a band aid on. Mm. So whatever was affecting us, whatever we were pissed off about, whatever we were marching about, whatever we were talking about and loud about our voices got lower mm. and we were more distracted because we were distracted. They put a bandaid on, they put a bandaid on a bullet wound and we accepted it and kept going. Right. Now 
I think people are, I, I can't say exactly what they're going to do, but I'm thinking people are going to be more consistent with it now because this has been going on for decades Longer than that. of us trying to build on our own and it keeps getting torn down or they keep cutting our legs out from under us. And I think that we've come to a point where we're sick of it. And I really think that we've got to a point where the whole tide is about to change. Gotcha. Vance, you got some input? Mm. Look, at that, look at that grin. Come on, Vance. <laughs> Come on, V. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very careful in my words because you know what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I got to be very careful with what I say and how I put it out there for trade. Um, I believe the reason is because we temporary, temporarily aware, temporarily woke. We have these moments where we wake up and everything's this way and then we go back to sleep. Um, like Candace was saying, it's where's the consistency? We, we tend to say day, day, day. But what about us, us, us? It shouldn't have to be where they have any type of influence on what we do and how consistent we be. Um, when you talk about a surge, I say the biggest surge going back to what Tyrone said was Black Wall Street. Why did they become who they were? Is because they had a cause. They, they actually, coming from slavery, and they stayed consistent in what they were doing because they had that cause of coming from slavery, becoming something, whatever. So we have to get into that mindset of becoming something as a race of people because within the other races, they don't see us as anything but black people out here raising hell and doing all kinds of things. And they go out and they grab the bag and they do this and that. And, the most uh, majority of them wants to be rappers and black. That's, that's just the stereotypes that's there. So within ourselves with this going on right now, I believe, how do we get across to say us as black people, where do we find our purpose? Where is, what is our purpose? Um, because we can sit back all day and say black business, this black business, that, but remember we only 15% of the population. Right. So we have to be able to establish ourselves with consistency, let folks know whoever still have the ideology that we're animals and things like that, that we're no longer that, and stay away. Don't go back to bed. That's what we have to do. We got to get away from those distractions. I think um, you're right when you when you say that. And I think Media is really good at distracting you. Football, basketball, any type of sport, you got to take your kids here and there. Your everyday life can really distract you from this moment. And right now we are, um, everybody <laughs> has to have limited contact with everyone. There aren't any sports. And so this is the main issue. This is what they're talking about. But think about before all of this happened. They, you know, it wasn't like this. They didn't put it on the TV. They didn't amplify the voices of people who were actually working on the front lines and stuff. They didn't put it out there like this and they should have. Like this should be at the top of the news all of the time, except for getting 45 up out of there. But, you know. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example of how black folks move. I'm, I'm pretty good friends with a lot of folks in the 80s, 90s hip hop era. And how do you think they became what they are to push hip hop what it was? Mm -hmm. It's because they came together. It wasn't a, you know, I talked to MC Light and all I did, and I said, well, how did this happen? Big Daddy came. It's because what we did, we collectively came together and didn't try to take from each other, but we grew together and we made things happen. So if Kane was on Light's album, he didn't ask her for any money. I'm not saying that, you know, when I have money or whatever, but I'm saying this is how they did it. They came collectively together and said, we're going to make this movement move how it, where we want it to be. Now, of course, we know how things goes on now. I mean, hip hop is more mainly about, about, about by whites and so on and so forth. But me being from DC, Knicks and New York and stuff like that, I watched a lot of these things happen. So 
That's why I say we have to collectively, we have to try to build our Wall Street again. I think that's happening. And I, and I believe that's happening. Yeah. But you know, I do believe that our Wall Street right now won't be built just by us as black folks. Right. Agreed. And that's what we have to understand. Exactly. Because we can go back and go black folk, black folk, black folk. But when you look at that TV, and like you said, um, with the, the media, I think it's a beautiful thing that I see all races of people out there. And I believe you're actually going to have people of different races will act also by black. But it's how we put it out there. How do we communicate it? I was talking to someone the other day and I said, you know, what I fear is that as black people, we don't understand. We're not at the back of the bus right now. We're driving the bus. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you drive the bus? Mm -hmm. Drive it recklessly? Or do you methodically, you make, you make things happen? And that's what we have to do. I watch so many people, they're angry about this and they're throwing it out there. You have a great message, but if you start that message with white people, what just happened? Black it's not, black not you out. <laughs> you're not going to hear it. So again, as, as black folks, I believe what we need to do is collectively come together and be able to educate ourselves in forums like this and put it out there and say, how do we come together and move as a unit? Because the new Black Wall Street is going to be better than the first Black Wall Street. Right. But how do we come together? That's the key. So for me, um, the la I mean, I'm aware of Black Wall Street and, and, and that um, and I do believe that they did an amazing thing during that time. I think it was amazing. I also believe that it worked because they had no other choice but for it to work. Yep. I okay. can't go and eat at, I'm just going to say Arby's or whatever. I can't go, no, Tom's Diner. Let me not get Arby's in trouble. That could be a Star Wars later. I can't eat at Tom's Diner because the sign on the door says whites only. I, I have no choice yeah. but to go eat at Bobby's Dive. And so I will go to Tulsa and I will eat at Bobby's Dive every day, Monday through Friday, Sunday dinner, because I may not have another choice. But then when I do, then I'll go to Jackie's Diner, yeah. who's also within my community, because I didn't have a choice. Yep. But so we supported almost by force, almost. Yeah. You, know, you, you get what I'm saying? We supported by force. Now, when you tell me, oh, now you have access to other places you didn't have access to before, you damn right I'm going to branch out and go try Arby's and Times Diner and this place and this place and that place. Then I think that's where the weighing of convenience starts to come in. Do I want to pay $9 for a fish sandwich at Bobby's Diner when I can get a $4 fish sandwich at this other place? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think it becomes support by force versus support versus choices of convenience. Okay? So I don't think it's not we don't support you anymore. It's just Eh, my dollar's kind of tight. Need this four dollar sandwich versus your nine dollar sandwich, and then it becomes habit. After you've done some seven times, it's a habit, and it's very, very hard to break. Um, I, I remember reading a story the other day, and it was saying that you know this girl's grandfather used to drive thirty five miles to get gas because there was not a black owned gas station anywhere closer to him, but than there. So of course he is going to go support the black business 35 miles away. You don't have a choice. But when but the but the but when the when um he was able to go to Shell Station that's now, you know, um desegregated and I can now I can use it, he would go 35 miles away and buy gas gift cards from the black station and use them at the shell so that the black station could still get the funds. Nice. His money, money for real. 
You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I mean, they still both getting paid, but you, you see what I'm saying? There was still some level of dedication. Okay, so why haven't we consistently been doing it? One, I feel it's convenience. I do. Um, I do believe that some people jump on the buy black, black matters, buy black business, support black business, because it is a trend. And I think um, uh, uh, this society right now is a whole lot of this and not a whole lot of action sometimes. Sometimes. We, they talk a whole lot about what they're going to do, but then the follow through was sometimes not the most consistent. Like, I had never, I didn't even think, I don't remember what year it was. I'm going to say maybe it was like four, three, four years ago. It didn't even dawn on me, and I'm educated. It didn't even dawn on me that there were Black-owned banks. Like, it didn't dawn on me until I heard, uh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, he's, I can't remember his name right now because I'm getting old. But anyway, he was talking on a show when with the last surge of Black Lives Matter, and he was like, put your money in the black banks, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, there's a bank called Citizens Trust Bank in Atlanta. Kill a mic. Thank you. Don't yeah. judge me. I couldn't, I was like, Mike <laughs> Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong mic. But anyway, I, could, I knew it was a mic, right? <laughs> Shut up, Craig. <laughs> so while I'm listening to the video, I start Googling Black Banks. He mentioned Citizens Trust. I Google Citizens Trust. While I'm listening to the video, I opened a bank account at Citizens Trust, and I got an allotment going to Citizens Trust. Why? Because I was informed. Yeah, yeah. But let me, let me just, can I say something real quick? Mm -hmm. My thing, and you know, I always laugh at myself because I always be like, well, I, I always don't think I'm going to start a firecracker. I guess it is. But my thing has always been, and I feel like it is now, we are being forced to deal with humanity. You know, I said it the other day, you cannot expect, we're so selfish and entitled. And when I say selfish, I mean everybody, that you're going to live on a planet that's more than just black, that's more than just white, that's more than just Asian, that's more than Japanese. And one of my friends was like, well, I, can't, I think we should go back to segregation. And I was like, why? I said, this world is not created for people to be separated. It never was created that way. And I think what's happening is, you know, we definitely need to protest. We definitely, like I always say, need the Malcolm and the Martin. We definitely need all of that. But I think it's leading to the understanding. And this comes to, for me, I know that I'm that person. You have to have people, not even when I say educated people, but heart people, people that understand how to communicate a bridge. Because we have to get back to the human race. We, that whole Black conversation, the whole Asian conversation, the whole Jew conversation, we're having these conversations and we're not doing anything to stop those conversations. Because people out here, and this is the real truth, they are just, I don't even say some, because as I'm seeing more be revealed, there's so many people that do not want this. Yes. And oh, yeah, because nothing, separation is money. You know, but and, but this, it's not even just about money. I, you know, for me, I choose, just like you, Brother Vance, I choose my words very carefully. I don't say something's evil unless I feel like it's evil. But it's evil to me when it goes beyond money. The stuff that I'm seeing right now is that people in general do not want this. And that doesn't just exclude Black. It's everybody coming together. And so I feel like the greatest power that we have is we have, I think that one of my phrases is, be so great that they cannot deny you. I posted yesterday, stay focused, do not get comfortable because our, us pushing is still necessary. We are getting the attention and pulling other cultures with us because we're finally taking a more firmer stand and we cannot let this go until people start to come with us that are from different races that we can build a bigger and stronger bridge. Yeah. We have to have the rest of the year where they're seeing not just us fight for us, but everybody 
fight for us. Because once you get Susie and Sally and B Rebecca and Jeannie and Aaron, and Aaron, Aaron. And Katie, Karen. <laughs> once we get Karen to fight for us, what happens is the narrative of change can happen. And my other thing is my beautiful sister, Keela. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You cannot invest in poor business. You have to invest in excellence. And we as a black community, we say buy black, but if you're not black excellence, I'm not buying nothing. Keela is excellent, wigs, faith, everything's together. She presents herself. And I think that's another problem that we have is that we push bandwagons, but we don't push the responsibility of excellence and it's necessary. I'm not gonna just give my money to a black man just because you black. See, here we go. I love you uh, because me, you have me, uh, already uh, started, hold on. You done already started I'm my, I'm so done already, no, 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 no. You have already started my segue into the next part. Oh, yeah. But I wanna, I wanna ask a question. I, and you said this a couple of times about getting away from the conversation of black and not calling black. What, what do you mean by that? I mean, I'm okay. So for years, I mean, we treat this conversation as if this has not been going on for all of our lives and our ancestors' lives. So if this conversation is on repeat, just like my dad said, if something's on repeat, that means it's not solved. You have to start looking for what's not being solved. If I'm still, like we said at the top of the conversation, and now we have our first Black America, Miss America, and now we have our first Black pilot, why are we here? Then there's something, there's a narrative, like they had um, uh, the black um, NASCAR racer. Um, they did the, the walk around with him because there was a news. Come okay. on, Bubba. Bubba, uh, Bubba. Bubba. It, I was watching the video and I was saying to myself, now I know most of them are just doing this because they need to be politically correct. Because it's, it's, it's trend right now. But I also was looking at this like, why? is there still only really one NASCAR? You know, like, like it, it does it make sense. And that's because of exclusion. And that's, you know, Brother Vance, for me, that's my problem is we have to tear down um, how they do us. They let us have one supermodel, one basketball player, one president, one female queen of rap, one R&B this, one mayonnaise maker. like never allow the door I mean, I'm saying they uh, never allow the door of we just people but you'll see a it wasn't of made go ahead, go ahead Keelan. it wasn't made for us right <laughs> and and that's why we have to I think what you're saying which is powerful it wasn't made for us but now that we're here and we need to take the work of Malcolm and then take the work of Martin and take the perk of Huey um Pete Newton and all these people that work and Finally, let them like lay back in their grave and smile and say, okay, let's build. I think the people, our forefathers were doing the work to build something. And if I think they were alive right now and see where we are, they'd be like, y'all ain't done about. But I, I will tell you that, like this, brother. Um, I agree with you to a point. I understand. I, I'm, I'm talking about the, and, and not attacking you, but attacking the, the, the conversation or the, the topic. Right, right, right. I, I agree with what you're saying to a point to where, yes, if it keeps going around, 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 yeah, it's it's not fixed. But tell me what, when in history, have we got to the point where we can have the conversation? If this is a point right now that we do have to identify black, we do have to identify those things, but we got to be able to communicate and have the conversations. Right. Uh, and, and, and then I, I believe what if, if what you're saying, if that had happened back in 1968, right. Uh, right. it would have been something totally different. Now we're in 2020. And now if you stop and you look at, I have white friends that come to me and say, hey, Tony, um, how can I help? Um, tell me more about what's going on. And I tell them about my blackness and I tell them about Malcolm and, and all of our black leaders. And I tell them about uh, Black Wall Street. So we have to, I tell them You're about the first time. Huh? 
That's what I'm saying. You're actually doing what I'm saying. Right. You're having a conversation, not in our community, but with the communities that need to help bring the change. Because like oh, he definitely. said, it's not built for us. And so we need to go out and have the conversation with people that don't look like us, that finally want to hear us because that's where the change will come. I do believe that we need to educate ourselves, but what you're doing, because I have nothing but a multicultural friends right. and now I'm giving them the education and that has been the bridge. I always right. say build a bridge instead of building a ditch. And I think what Keila was saying as far as like, it's not been for us, we're at a place now where it can be for us if you, 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 and you, and you will take the opportunity to go and speak to other races because we do really need everyone on this. If, right. if somebody says that we by ourselves, and I know, Lord have mercy, I don't know who's going to throw a dart at me, but we by ourselves can conquer this. I think we are doing a great job right now, but in order to really to really mess it up, we got to get other races to understand the value of us, the power of us, the need of us, the beauty of us. If they don't do that, then we're going to always come back to the same mirror. And that's my problem is like, what do I need to do to get out to other cultures and races to make them understand, I need you. You know why? because you need me, right. we're human. And I think in my mind, but not to, let me shut up. You know. No, 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 don't shut up. I'm telling you, it's about to be a segue because I agree with you. And I think I've said this on several other shows mm -hmm. and not even, I've even put it on my own personal Facebook page saying, hey, we have to have a dialogue with others. Yes. Mm -hmm. because, you know, I had somebody one day uh, uh, um, uh, on one of the, uh, my Facebook uh, timeline one day say, you, it's not your responsibility to teach other races about this, that, and the third. They know. Yep. They just don't want to know. And I'm like, pause. No, yep. that's yep. the wrong yep. mentality. Yep. It might right. not be your responsibility, but guess what? Every time anyone outside of my race or inside of my race is misunderstood about anything in life, I call that a teachable moment. If I don't try to inform you, teach you, or correct you right then and send you on your way, I have done you wrong. I have done you injustice by mm -hmm. not, you may not like what I have to say, but I'm going to say it because I feel that that's what I am supposed to do. And I've had friends during this whole time frame come in, come on my page and start asking questions. And then I have other individuals come in and start attacking. And I'm like, pump your brakes. My page is a safe space. A, hit me in my inbox. I'm deleting all this nasty crap. Talk to me on my inbox. Because you, because some of the questions they want to ask or some of the things they want to know, they're not safe doing right. it in front of the World Wide Web when maybe three out of 3,000 out of 5,000 of my friends are Black and they're scared of being attacked. So I'm right. like, inbox me. I have no right. problem sending you links, giving you mm -hmm. info, explaining why your statement was not correct, so on and so forth. Because guess what? You can still walk away with your own ideas yeah but it's not gonna be because i didn't tell you what was up for real That's and crazy. and so and i do feel we need these allies and, and so going into i gotta bring it back to black business because it's still needed right even though we as the 15 percent as vance has said we only 15 percent so that means 15 percent of us can't just support 15 percent of us we want other right. individuals to support us as well. So well, you know, you and I have had that conversation. Yes, there. we have. Yes, <laughs> and, we and have. Fifteen percent is basically down to about five percent when 5%, you start breaking it down. Right. <laughs> so we want to talk. We want to kind of switch this to, and the reason I want to talk about this this next subject is because uh, I want to talk about black business stereotypes that we have encountered. And first, I want to talk about it as a business owner point of view. And then we're going to flip it to a cus as a customer point of view. 
because if we are not operating our businesses to a certain standard, those other nationalities or races are not going to patronize our business. They're not. Because if they're used to a particular standard, and I'm not saying our standard is lower. I'm not saying that. But if they're used to a particular standard and we are not providing that same level of service, customer service, same level of product, they will abandon your brand. So black business stereotypes. First to discuss business point, business owner point of view. What are the stereotypes as a business owner that you encounter? And if y'all don't want to start, I can start because I already got one that's heavy on my heart that I need to get off. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. <laughs> get it, get it. Okay. Black <laughs> business stereotype. I'm sorry. Everybody was like, uh, nope, I got one. I've been thinking about it all day. Can we just oh, smoke? This? What are we doing? You can smoke on this one, Keely. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> black business stereotype that I have as a business owner, I am tired of being asked for the hookup. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. As a business owner, you've see. okay, if y'all don't know, I do entertainment of all types. I'm the hostess with the mostest. I will make your party pop. Or, party or whatever. Party popping? Okay, so I know what I am worth thanks to somebody in one of these six boxes. I know what I am worth and I charge what I am worth. And nine mm -hmm. times out of 10, if you have seen me, you are wanting what you saw, but you want to pay me Kool-Aid money for the same product. That is my biggest business owner pet peeve. You want the hookup for everything. That's my issue. Kool-Aid yeah. money with no sugar. Uh, yes. huh. <laughs> <laughs> you can come well, in and expect XO performance. Yeah. That's not oh, how definitely. Yeah. Well, That's not you know, how that works. You know right. with me, you 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 know pretty much the gamut I've ran in the, the music industry and right. things of that nature from promoter to manager to all these different things. And you're absolutely correct. Um, I think the only time it was really, really great was when I was in Germany. Yes. Because it, not to knock my people, you know, I love us to death, but <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have that issue. You know, when we brought over, you know, Paul Wall, Mike Jones, all that, it was basically, here it is, here's the money and go. Right. But before I left and I went to, uh, to Germany and doing everything here in Florida, from jazz festivals to, I don't think people understand what it takes to make it happen. They don't understand that front money. They don't understand the promotion money. They don't understand all those different things. All they know is when they show up, they just want to party and can I get in there for free? So that's one of my biggest pet peeves as well, as well as with my brand. Um, You've had to talk me off a ledge a few times about cussing a few folks out and going off like, Vance, just chill out. Um, but I did learn something along the way with the brand. I I've been doing this for a long time. Um, you know, the brand really started popping about two years ago, but it's been, been going for a while. I was doing it with the music. Um, however, I made some pretty good connections and won't call any names. Um, and right before coronavirus came off, I was about to just take off. Mm, yeah. But I was told by a very well-known person, every one of us know here, who said to me, you don't give anything away for free unless that person is going to bring something back to you. Come on. And that's meaning if that person don't have enough people to influence what you have, <laughs> you don't give them nothing for free. Now you're going to sit there, you're going to piss off a whole lot of people. But I look after you know a lot of conversations we had. I started realizing those same pissed off people become happy people when they when they see me growing, and it goes back to what um, 
Black was saying, uh, to the trending. That's when people start following that trend. What's GMLA? What's happening? What's going on? And those same people who had something to say, next thing I know, they got my shirt on. Right. Or, or, they, or they got a hoodie on or, or whatever. So sometimes we have to, even though the stereotype's there, as business owners, we got to understand that's what it is amongst Black people. And as we were talking about educating the rates, we need to educate them as well when it comes to what Black business is about. And the reason I can't give you something for free instead of saying no. And that's what I found I started doing was, this is what I'm trying to do. I've, I've actually priced my, my items to a price where it's affordable. And you know, at one time when I first got started, I wanted to make sure everybody had it, so I had it really cheap. Right. But then, you know, someone came to me and said, when you place that value on that, that's what people are gonna see. So you need to find that medium and you stick with it. And if you give it free, like I said, if I send some shirts, everybody on here I'll send a shirt to because I know that's a singer, that's a comedian, I know she's doing hair. I know, I'll send, on, send a shirt. shirt. Come on, send a shirt. <laughs> so, so, and I know once it goes out there, that's advertisement. <laughs> so, right. You know, right. so we just gotta be able to educate people to that. And stereotype, 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 it's gonna always be there. So true. I think um, as a business owner, um, I haven't really come across any stereotypes. I've seen a lot of people talking about stereotypes, um, but I don't feed into them because I know where the community of Black people um, and I don't ever want to undercut, undercut that. I think rejection is important when you, um, you are at the beginning of your process, when you're at the beginning of your business. Um, like Microsoft, start, where did Microsoft start? In their garage or was that Amazon? Uh, no, that was, um, wasn't that, bill, uh, no. Billion, I don't know. Microsoft, it started in a garage? Yeah, so you know, they started somewhere, they had to do things for free, they had to, you know, stumble um, over and, and learn from their lessons, not their losses. And so as a man, in mass, this is where the black community is, just because slavery. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Finger for you. What about uh, that? Finger for you. Like, like, wait a minute, I wasn't even prepared. That was, that was for my ancestors. That was not me. <laughs> oh, that was that, that just jumped out of you. That did. She was like, finger for you. And she wants to talk about table food. Right, because we should be much further along, and it pisses me off because there's been a deliberate war against black people by the American government, and it just really upsets me. Okay, that's something else. But <laughs> where another about? show. <laughs> with, as a um, in our business and so yeah you should um, work with people who have their businesses together and if somebody approaches you who doesn't have their stuff together give them pointers say hey you know in the future I'd like to you know possibly revisit this conversation but right, right now it's this this and this um, for example I actually gave a critique of a, um, a woman's business a black business because I thought the way that she was presenting it just wasn't attractive. And you know, my husband's social media, uh, you don't know, but this, you know, um, he does social media. And so I have an eye for that. And so I wanted to help her. And, um, you know, I sent her a private message and everything. But I think maybe if we start do little things like that, come respectful towards each other, learn from each other, give to each other, even if we can't um, patronage the, the person's business right now, give them a little bit of, of advice, some of your lessons that you've learned. And so um, that's kind of where I'm at when, when it comes to, you know, how I support black businesses. And we just need to grow. We don't have everything yet. We don't have all the educate. Every one of us aren't educated just yet on how to right. run a business. Right. Some of us just aren't um, entrepreneurs and that is okay. And so like if, if the majority of people in America have been able to learn from examples you know, for generations after generation after generation, we are being compared to those, to that community. That's right. not where we are. We are some of the first, second, or even third generations of people who had a business. And so we don't have farmers like, you know, there are other white owned farmers, you know what I'm saying? We don't have that. Um, we don't have every, we're not in every single industry because we're not yet interested in every single industry, but we will get there. We right. are coming. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but right. what we are right now, us, this generation <laughs> of people, you know, this is our responsibility right now to build and educate um, for the future. Mm. Right. 
And when you when you talk about farms, I'd have thrown it in. Yeah, uh, my family owns a farm, a very big farm. And yeah. here, here's on, here's the thing: what a lot of blacks don't know. We talk about educating black. There's more black farmers in a state of Alabama than anywhere in the world. Um, when you talk about produce and stuff like that. Um, however, I, mean, I, re I remember growing up as a kid, you start talking generational stuff. I remember going to my grandfather and we would go to the farmer's market and we would have to park our trucks a certain, on a certain lane while all the whites were going um, in another lane. And we basically had to put our produce on the backside and the whites had gotten everything up front. Wow. Um, but now when you go to farmer's market in Birmingham, you see our, our name all over the place. Um, however, when you talk about produce and getting it out into white America, it's hard for black farmers to do that. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are still, um, actually there's some that's farming, farm, they're farming on the 40 acres and a mule that they got. Well, the yeah. mule's dead, but the land's still there. But, you know, it, it's some of them that, um, that's doing that. And I think those are the things, like you said, educate. There's so much out there that Blacks don't know and even whites don't know about Blacks. Um, so when I tell people, you know, we got tons of Black farmers in Alabama, they look at me like, what, what in the world? I mean, um, I know that we are black, black farmers. I'm just saying, as a, as a whole in society, we don't have that many farmers to then affect like to have a union maybe right. to then affect change across the industry you right. know well, i just want to throw that out there because we're on this podcast and we do oh yeah so we believe, do. It, believe it or not um because have enough? oh it's it's a lot um we probably just need to google and see who they are because we right and and, 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 and i'm glad she brought that up black farms yeah right. and that's what i'm saying i'm glad she brought that up and i want to just put that out there because just like when people were saying black wall street I know black folks that didn't know nothing about Black Wall Street, but that's a good point she put that out there because this this going out to other people is educational to go, wait a minute, I didn't know that. Um, that's didn't out know. there. And, and it could be people in Alabama that don't know that. Um, right. But but they're out there. that's why I'm not, not going against what you said. Yeah. Actually, but um, just, but I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> it took mainstream media and movies to mm -hmm. put Black Wall Street on the forefront. Because I mean, Netflix and release Watchmen, <laughs> that's when a lot of people started like, what is that? Yeah. Even I mean, my even, husband, I mean, my husband, of course, not from this country. Right. You're watching Watchmen. And he's like, did that really happen? And I was like, yeah, it really happened. So I Googled it and I showed it to him. And he was like, enraged like it happened last year. You know what I mean? He was pissed. You know, but mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but there's a lot of people who do not know that entire story and that entire saga. Candace, you had something that you yes, wanted you to say. I'm you. sorry, Candace, I'll cut you off. Uh, no, 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 you're fine. Um, kind of forgot my point. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I think it was back to um, the, the stereotypes. Um, I've seen um, both sides of it for business owners where um, I have some friends that are business owners and like y'all said, they'll be asked for the homeboy hookup. Like, oh yeah, I know that's everybody price, but we, we, how much you gonna give it to me for? Uh, that's the price that I'm selling it for. Like, this is the set price that we have for this particular item and that's what I'm selling it for. So I, I think that a lot of people, um, a lot of us, um, will uh, automatically think because I'm patroning your business or because we're friends or because we go way back that, you know, I I'm entitled to getting a discount from you. Um, mm -hmm. No, if, if I am really supporting your business and I am all in for you, you're doing your friend a disservice to not support them in paying whatever costs that they are they have set for their particular product. It's like you, um, you're you downplaying the, the craftsmanship that they have on whatever product it is. And it's almost like a slap in the face. It's like, okay, right. this is what I made. You know how much hard work and blood, sweat, and tears I put into creating my brand and into 
getting my name out there, getting my brand out there, and then for you to come back and like, oh, well, let me give you 15. No, right. don't do that. Right. They're quoting their own price. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like willing to invest in your friend's business. I have friends that, you know, hey, I'll do my due diligence. I do try and um, support black business, whether I know the person or not. I was like, okay, I know it's a black business. Let me try and, you know, give them not necessarily benefited it out, but I, I would like to patron, you know, as many as I can. But for certain items, it's like, okay, I know the quality that my friend makes. So, hey, this what I want. Can you make such and such and such and such? You're like, yeah, girl, I got you. All right, what's your price? And I'll send it to her. Even if I don't send a particular amount, I'm normally give her like five dollars more or seven or ten dollars more because I'm investing in her. I know what she's done. I know what she is continuing to do. Everybody's got a family. Everybody's trying to provide for themselves and do something to keep the betterment of themselves. So why would you downplay that? And then the other thing is um, the whole like crabs in a bucket mentality. It's like if if I don't um, if I don't have any competition, that means it's more business for me. There are plenty of people in the world that everybody's business can be visited and that everyone can sell something. So it, it's not that you know if you selling you know you selling shoes on the on West side and I'm selling shoes on the east side I, I don't I don't need to take you out so that I can make sales like that you, the market share never under no. you are you up on my corner you pushing up on me right <laughs> right like, I, 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 I never understood the the gravity of that it's like there are plenty of people around for everyone to eat mm. but there, there's no oh, need yeah. for to be trying to downplay someone else or trying to take from their business or trying to take somebody else out so that you can have. There could be friends that they've known for years that are going to patron their business. Just because you took them out, that don't mean they're going to you. They might find somebody else. Right. And when you look back at like the um, Black Wall Street and and what happened in Rosewood and, and what, what happened in Gringo, you look at all these different places from where they came from with slavery and then they dug you know pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and made things happen they didn't have any other option like dizzy was saying earlier we have other options now so yeah i can go to you know ray ray's um lounge over here on the corner and and hang out and and get whatever i need from them i might pay a little more but now it's convenient because there's this store right here it's down the street i don't have to go that far and it's a little cheaper. Uh, I ain't got that much money till payday. I'm just running here real right. quick, and I'm gonna be out. And that's what a lot of us do. And like you said, once you do it seven times, it, it's habit. Yeah. Like I go, I go right next week. Next week becomes next month. Next month becomes next year. We're like, I ain't seen you in a while, right? Right? Yeah, because you quit coming to my business. Like, <laughs> right. Right. I, there's so much you can say. But as far as you know, going back from the slave days to to where our, our forefathers were and our ancestors were, they they had no choice. Right. It was bust or bust. True. They, they had no, it was sink or swim. Right. So you go to the water fountain that's on the back side of the building or you thirsty. I'm about to say, you don't get no water at all. <laughs> you don't get no water at all. I don't think you're going to the one in the front and risk getting shot. I don't know. Um, right. But I think that, um, as far as black business are concerned, um, to keep whatever standard that you have set and it, and maintain that or exceed that. Um, don't let some come in and try and say, oh, well, you know, your your products aren't as good as, as what they're making over here. Like you can look on Etsy and there are so many different businesses that are making so many different types of products. And I think they're, they're, they've done like Netflix and they have like a black section now, you know, where you can kind of see like, okay, man, they have like some really nice stuff in here. We make or nice black stuff owned. too. Black yeah. owned so black. that you know who are, you, yeah, you know who you're buying from. Right. So it, it, we make nice stuff. Don't try and downplay us or right. make it seem like 
we the things that we make are, are hood and they're, they're gonna be no yeah we got some amazing <laughs> creative artists out there definitely <laughs> we are very creative true very everyone in here has a different talent we show sure do right so you know <laughs> Greg Greg like please all figure out what that is and are able to um, manifest that and build on it so the same thing with so many other black business owners and white and Indian and Asian everyone has a different vision for whatever they're doing but in this particular instance we're trying to push us because we've been squashed for so long Agreed. we've been stepped for so long Great. Agreed. Tyrone Gregory what you got back okay so those of you that watch the show, y'all know I'm a little OCD. So I got to go back and ask Dizzy because I had something to say. <laughs> but all of us are friends. Like, we fool y'all. And we get off our sub shit. And Dizzy <laughs> asked the you question. You want me to ask the question again? You know I do. Baby. All right. I so I want to say, we talking about black business stereotypes. Uh -huh. And as a business owner, that was the part. What stereotype have you encountered as the business owner? Not as okay. the customer, but as the business owner first. I just needed the refresher. It's not a oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so. Well, I, I'm going to say this part. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get close because this is going to be real good. It um, probably won't be, but... It's going to be real good. Look, look. Because has always been able to help me. I am a giver. And this is for all the business owners that are givers, and it's a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. um, I give and give. I've already been the person that gave the hookup. I'm the person that didn't know my price range. I'm the person that didn't understand all these things. I've been doing, um, being self-employed for over 13, maybe 14 years now. Um, now I'm going into entrepreneurship, but the one thing that is my biggest pet peeve, and I'm getting real close because I want everyone that's watching the show to know that I'm going to say it and I want <laughs> to feel it. Okay. No matter how hard a business, especially a black business pushes out excellence back to back to back to back to back you still won't support. You uh -huh. still won't give your money. You uh -huh. still won't post on Instagram. You still won't say nothing on Facebook. You still won't go to your neighbor and let somebody know. You still won't go on your phone and just spread the word. You still won't. But I'm going to say this because I learned another lesson too. Because it's all about accountability and reality. People support what they believe in. And I had to back up and I had to recognize that no matter how great my business may be, people are allowed the opportunity to support what they believe in. And so that's why when I talk about supporting black business, I'll support black businesses, I'll support businesses. Everybody knows me, I do it, but I realize most of us have to have the understanding when you create something that people are only going to support truly what they believe in. Right. My pet I, peeve well, I though, is you, I want you. other people to understand though, common courtesy and value of supporting other people in business is important. It's just great to support. And I think that's the missing common denominator, even when I'm necessarily not going to buy these mittens from Dizzy that go over my ear and my feet, I'm still going to buy them anyway because <laughs> I believe that she believes in her business. So I'm going to at least get one pair of those mittens on my ears and on my feet. <laughs> I may not get another pair, but you're going to get my support. So that's where my little short synopsis is. No, Greg, I don't have mittens. <laughs> And they're like, you're about to say, Dizzy got mittens? Look, I <laughs> well, Greg, Greg I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And Dizzy can test to this because uh, I, I called her up. I, you, as you can tell, I called I her Frank a lot. Huh? Uh, 
You said Greg got passed up. I can totally attest. Oh, Greg. I thought Greg was. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Bad. Go ahead, wait a minute. Hold on. I <laughs> thought Greg just wanted to know the question again. I didn't know he had something to say. I'm I didn't sorry. know he had something to say either. I'm sorry. I thought okay. you just wanted to know. Okay, Greg. Okay, Greg. I'm wrong. Gregory has been going like this. <laughs> I don't know how long. And I ain't been able to say shit. Okay. Next. Go ahead, Greg. They had you on pause. Chime in. <laughs> oh my god i'm i'm so sorry I'm so i sorry. asked you to help i even said high five me in kb and you oh i hear me. that <laughs> okay <laughs> now i even asked dizzy to repeat the question oh, so i could answer it and KB answered it funny. I'm I'm so sorry, but oh, Greg, it's all right, Greg. It's all right, Tyra Gregory. <laughs> Give me your black now, business stereotype as a business. So the stereotypes oh. that I have come into because just like at the top of the show, I had to even ask what what I do, is it even a business? And Dizzy asked, she said, do you own yourself? And I said, well, yes, I do. Tyrone Gregory comedy. Yes, I do own myself. And I learned something from every face on this camera that y'all see, all five faces that y'all see, I learned something today. Number one, I learned that I am a business. But the stereotype that I've been you know, witnessing and, and, and been stereotyped that is, uh, well, I haven't been doing it long enough, you know. Mm. Um, just like Kabana said, you know, uh, not knowing what uh, my worth or how much I should be charging, you know. Just like, just like uh, V said over here, he was like, you know, hey, I know if I give this person a shirt, that person's shirt, this, 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 I know what these people do. I know that that's advertisement. You know, I learned the biggest thing from Dizzy. You know, every time Dizzy got something going on, I say, Dizzy, can I be a part of it? I don't ask for money. I say, can I be a part of? She'll say how much, she'll ask me how much. Mm. I say, I don't want anything. I want the experience and the chance to get my name out there and for the people to see me. And a lot of people starting their own business don't realize the point of even getting to get your name out there and getting seen. Yeah. The beginning, the beginning of, of the people, process. Right? Yeah. A lot of people want to omit that process of getting out there whether it's any kind of business but i want to appeal to our black people in business black people in business when you are in business uh, you have to look up to those that are already doing it and grab hold to the knowledge that they have grab hold and and listen don't use them allow yourself to be useful to them because if you are not useful mm. you know, wait 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 on, no, Greg. wait 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 Greg. hold on that, you preached Woo, that was good say that it was again good. Greg. say it no, again Greg. say that again to them don't Woo. use them be useful to them because if you're useful to them they will show you how to be useful to yourself and it's just period, point blank. It's period. That's the only reason I'm sitting here on this screen right now. I made myself useful to my sister. That's awesome. That's what's up, y'all. That's, That's what's up. Keep That's up. powerful. Business. Stereo but I, sat here, I sat here quiet the whole time. That was, you know why? Because you was you were marinating in your in your word, and that was perfect. You was in your pie. God had to simmer that word a little bit more so it could come out right. Come on, wave it up. So, so when y'all out here and y'all trying to start these businesses, like I said, at the top of this 
whole conversation, I had to ask these five individuals, am I, hold on, am I a business owner? And they all five replied back to me, yes, you are. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. that's absolutely. what I'm saying. That's right. dope. That's dope, dope, dope. That is dope. Y'all have to understand this. Like, y'all watching viewers, understand you are powerful. You can be exactly what you want to be. And guess what? Half of y'all are, but y'all don't have the the people pushing y'all. Or y'all not recognizing the people that's already pushing y'all. They don't realize that they're already their own brand. Right. Matter of fact, you are already your own brand. What you me, do with that brand is up to you. Let me say this, sis. I'm going to say this right now. Be pushed be positive be unique <laughs> be sincere be humble be ethical and be decided all right be pushed all right damn i just made that up you get it you get it you did it come on let's clap for our brother so that was good now come on here Come on, the church say amen. Come on. <laughs> hey, for real, man. You got to be that way, man. You you, you have to oil. You are not if you're not if you are not pushed, you will not do it. You won't go out here and make your business and you will not go and help other businesses. You will not help your brothers and sisters. Right. And we won't move. If you're not pushed, you will not move. Agreed. Agreed. Keela Black business stereotype, business owner. Didn't I do my stereotype? Yes, yes you, you did. did, my bad. Okay, <laughs> black business stereotype, customer. Oh. As a customer, what is the black business stereotype you have run into as a customer? Or what has made you reluctant to support another black business? Don't name the business. <laughs> okay, because I don't want to throw people under the bus, but what has made you reluctant to support a particular business? I don't want to say black businesses because we can't be all thrown in the same pot. Just like right. black people, we ain't all the same. We're right. not all the same. So what ha what is a um, experience or what is a trait, I guess you could say, of a black business that you like, nah, I can't mess with that business. I can't do that no more. Keela, let, let's let Keela go first on this one. Go ahead, Keela. Um, we need to get away from Come on. Uh, thinking in terms of like the black business and we're gonna, you know, um, like support this business or we're not gonna support that business within the black community. Okay. How we need to think about it is we need to support businesses that are in that stage of their business that we can then buy stuff from them, where their products, their logistics, um, their like everything, their marketing and stuff is on point. And then you, you know, you can start patronizing that, per that um, business, but maybe they're too early in the process. Right. You know, some people are just going to be too early in the process. So I think it's not about, um, oh, this black business is bad. No, they've just only been doing business for six months. And just like Greg was saying, they think they need to be where somebody who's done business for five years is. That's not where you're going to be. So put in your 10,000 hours. That's, I think, um, that stereotype where, oh, Black businesses, they don't have good quality stuff or anything like that. A lot of them are small business that, businesses that are starting up with money that's in their savings account. Right. And they're going to trip and they're going to learn from stuff. But if we start looking at it as, okay, this is just a business that's too soon for me to get into. <laughs> you right. know, I, I, but I'll come back to you. Let me go see who else is out there. So right. I, okay. Candice, you had your hand, because I remember you were saying that you had a recent bad experience. Yeah, this week. <laughs> <laughs> this week. It's all day. <laughs> um, so, uh, for just for my the scenario that that I was involved in, I'm not going to put the business out there, but um, I normally frequent uh, one of my friends' business for um, a particular product that I like to order. 
and I always get like different colors and I order from for other people. I'll buy her stuff as gifts and then I'll send it to people just because I, I'm investing in her. I, I uh, support her. I respect her. I believe in the product that she's doing, that she's making. Um, I, I've seen everything that she's done come to fruition and, and I've watched it grow. Um, so uh, just in trying to um, not necessarily branch out, but just to kind of give, um, just to familiarize myself with other businesses, um, I uh, reached out to someone else and was like, hey, can you make this? And she was like, yeah, I can do that. Um, that's no problem. Um, I can get it sent to you. Cool. I'm going to get this for my husband. She was like, all right, just tell me what color you want. Perfect. Uh, a whole month goes by and I haven't heard from her. So I was like, uh, baby, where's my, where, where's the product I asked? I, I, I paid you today. We, we, like, I paid up front. So it right. was, I didn't ask my homeboy hookup because we weren't, we're not friends like that. But even still, I'm just, you know, putting it out there. I paid up front. And I think like three and a half, almost four weeks had went by. And I was like, hey, you know, is everything okay? Is my order still in? You know, you know, update me what's going on with it. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, um, uh, some of the equipment that I used broke down. I had to order some new ones because I had a surge in, um, in customers that were trying to buy my product. Cool. I said, all right, that's awesome. That means business is good. Cool. Um, I said, well, let me know when you're going to be able to ship it out and send me a tracking number so, you know, I can, you know, kind of follow it along, make sure it gets here. And she said, all right, cool. So another two weeks goes by and I finally get the tracking number and she apologizes again. And, oh, I'm sorry. Um, things got busy and, you know, I, I, I got your product. I sent it out to you. Cool. Well, I get it. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, bruh, like... <laughs> what is this? I should have just stuck with what I knew because she went and met my homegirl would have never did this to me. What is this? Like the, it just wasn't up to par. It, right. it really wasn't. Quality wasn't what you expected. I was, I was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. And um, I hit my friend up first and I was, she was like, see, that's what you get. And she just came just to me. I was like, look, I was trying to out the other folks and she was like, I understand. I do the same thing. She was like, I try and, and work with other businesses. I try and get new vendors, you know, just trying to reach out and, and spread the love around. Cool. Got it. So I was like, okay, so this is what happened. She explained it to me. I was like, okay, so how can I reach back out to the seller? I don't want to be disrespectful and I don't want her to feel like I'm coming at her. So what can I say? Because I want to be correct in doing this. I don't want to come off like the angry black woman or whatever. She was like, okay. She was like, say it this way, you know, tell her, you know, this is what you expected. It, um, it explained the different things that you see on it and what you saw that was wrong and let her know be like, Hey, if you'd like to make me another one, or, you know, we can just, I can exchange it for a different product, you know, kind of give her other options. Not like, oh, I hate this and you were terrible. No, she's like, you know, come, you know, respectful. I was like, cool, got it. And so I did that. And um, I talked it over with my husband and he was like, nah, I don't want it. Just tell her, you know, we're willing to send it back, you know, less shipping, you know, I'm not worried about that part. And we were like, okay, cool. So I hit her up and she was like, well, um, well, well since you ain't satisfied with it, I, I guess uh, I'll just send you your money back. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate it. She's like, I just give you a refund. All right, cool. Well, it don't take seven to 10 days for no refund to come through. Two weeks has gone by and I still ain't seen my money. So I'm like, uh, baby girl, where's, where's, where's my money? Like, so I hit my friend. I was like, okay, do I send her another message? Cause we already had a whole conversation. Like I got screenshots and everything. She was like, Nah, just go through PayPal because at this point she's not going to give your money back. Wow. So I had a third party to kind of mitigate that to make sure that we got Ooh. our money back. But I, I you say didn't, sue them. <laughs> I want well, no. I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be funky about it or yeah, you know would. come on with attitude and and degrading her and putting her name on the street. So like that. it's not that type of issue with me. But it was just I know what type of standard I was used to even with a black business and she didn't live up to that. 
-hmm. And I think that's okay that, you know, some businesses aren't up to par from what you are used to and things like that. But I think it's how you respond to it is what would go forward as a customer versus bad mouthing them in the street. Now, if it's something really jacked up, like maybe you went and got your hair done and they burnt your scalp and you told them don't put a perm in and they did it anyway. <laughs> okay. That's something completely different. But <laughs> Right. Right. But, I, I just didn't want to be that person. Like going overseas, I don't want to be the ugly American. Like I, I wanted to make sure that I came off correct and I didn't, I wasn't funky about it or, or had a, a bad attitude towards it. Um, I didn't feel the same way from her, but right. I just know not to go that route anymore. I know to kind of stick with what I know. Okay. Kabani, your face all screwed up. Well, because I feel like, number one, and if I mention my dad, you know, I've learned a lot from my father. I didn't get it until now, but his wisdom is making sense to me. Number one, when you spend money, it's not about friendship. It's not about family. It's money. And when you're spending money, there is a back action that needs to happen. And number two, I think for me, I kind of go where Keela going. I don't assume it to be the black community. I just think that it's the personality of the business mm -hmm. because people have poor etiquette and they don't know how to handle themselves. And when you want a product and you give your $50 and they say six days, then it's six days. Anything after that, then we go to the next level. And even with you, Candace, all that lengthiness, they wouldn't have got nothing. They were like, I'm not satisfied with this product. It did not look the way it uh, was in the picture. I want a full refund back. Thank you so much for your business. And you're done. And my dad taught me a long time ago in business, business, when there is money, is black and white. Business, where there is no money, is gray. Hmm. And that means it gets crazy. And we do gray business instead of doing black and white business. And I think a lot of times that for me is the biggest problem is that we're having gray conversations in the black community instead of holding them to a higher standard. Yeah. I started off with, with my company, Costo. Dizzy supported me and got my shirts and all of this kind of stuff. And I did a site and I took some pictures and did everything I was supposed to. But I found myself getting overwhelmed and see this is what we don't want to share just like you said as far as like you pulling from your savings you pulling from this but me the spirit of excellence i let my customers know you know what i'm doing good but i'm not doing good at this so i <laughs> closed the business yep. literally um, i closed the business did my last shirt i still have people ordering black when i'm like well we're going back up because i realized when you get a demand for things, you have to meet the demand. So right. it was a great experience for me, but the people that um, love my stuff, they now hit me up. Well, whenever you go back to business, we love your, you know, your business. We love how you handle us, how you was honest. I sent them free music. I sent them everything because you have to take care of your customers and you have to show that spirit of excellence. That's how I am as an artist. When it comes to my music, full fledged my videos look like million dollar videos because i need people to know i'm industry standard i'm not local standard i'm right. local, right. I'm not local. Right. and that so is therefore that i feel like that is more of the problem i think in our community is not necessarily me labeling my community but just understanding that when money is involved it's business correct and then when you can get that point Oh, we good. I'll hug it out. But if I have my $15, by the time I get my hug, we gonna have a problem. Not by the time I get my hug. It's like hug and boom, I'm gonna send you that paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's all good though. And I think that that is, and Candace just like from this point on, just know that you don't have to explain yourself as a paying customer. If you're not satisfied, a business understands that when a person is not satisfied, then hey, you just have to eat it. That's yeah. why I love Chick-fil-A. I mean, I don't believe in everything they do, but it's, huh? No, we don't. No, I this is I, look, look, you know, I, I, I put it like this. Until he recent, loves the food of no, 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 I'll say this, no. Until recent information, about Chick-fil-A. 
I will say this because it's still the truth. Their etiquette, their ability to serve, their ability to be efficient, and their ability to take care of their employees is impeccable. Now, the other part, we hope that God, you know, fixes it. And I'm going to be supporting Hardee's and um, McDonald's. Hardee's, the same place that you were sending people to shit? Are you serious? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Well, not Hardee's. I got to figure out. There's so much coming out. Like, there's so much. Yeah, that's exactly what was happening. There was so much shit coming out. There was so much coming so out. Much coming out. It's so much coming out. So what I'm going to do, you know what? This is what everybody need to do. You need to do a juicer. And get that good spinach and kale. Yeah. And go to Hardy's because not at Cabana House. Okay. And get some, <laughs> get some grapes. Get some grapes. Eat some good Can we? Uh uh. Go to Hardy's. Go to Hardy's. Okay. And just, and just, you know, do it without. I guess that's what you. Boy, hush. Okay. Sorry. 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 Vance. Hold on. I'm going to get you, Greg. I'm going to get you. Vance. No, I was trying to go to Vance too. Yeah. Vance. <laughs> I'm no, sorry, man. <laughs> Customer no, point of view. What's the I, issue? I gotta get like Greg now. Repeat the can you repeat the question. I know we didn't go so far. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so hey, sorry. As hey, a hey, customer, hey. It's all good. As a make customer. Make it go like this, huh, V? Hey, make yeah. it go like this. <laughs> as a customer, hey. What is a stereotype or an issue that you have encountered with a black business? Either a stereotype you've encountered or a actual um, fact. An issue, but you don't have to name the name of the business, just what the hell happened? What was the problem? Overpricing for low quality. Makes um, sense. That's, yeah, that is one. It's um and you should know you should know your product. Um I believe, you know, going in, um, and I was listening to what um, Keela, what she was saying. Um, I'm trying to choose the words correct because I, you know, so I hear it, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, like you talking about my business? You ain't <laughs> like my barbecue? No, go ahead. I mean, let me. <laughs> you know, I'll change up on that. I'll just stick with you know overpricing for um, low quality. Um, I do believe, you know, we get started in, in business, um, just like, you know, folks will say, well, GMLA is a, a, a clothing company. And I tell them, no, it's not. It's a brand. Um, it's, a, it's a brand printed on clothing. Uh, but when I first started out, I mean, I could go to this little small mom and pops place and only afford a certain ounce t-shirt or whatever. But although my brand was like everything to me, it's not everything to everybody else just yet. Just so yet. what you what you find is as a customer when I go in, I, I like to try to support the business, but if I pick up this t-shirt and I can see straight through it and you want to charge me sixty dollars because your brand, I understand you love your brand. Yeah. But yeah. understand the quality of what you have. Um and that's where I have the issue at because, you know, I, I don't mind even buying something low quality to help out a business that's coming up because like Keila was saying, is people are coming from their bank accounts and um, savings or income tax check or whatever they decided to do. And I will, I mean, hey, I done bought stuff from those school kids, done paid $25 for a pen to help out the kids. But understand what you got. And that's my only issue um, with, with the stereotypes of, of black business. Cool. Greg, what you got? So it goes along with like what V was just saying about, you know, understanding your product, understanding what you have. But I'm, I'm OCD. I, I hate going into like, for me, I'm going to go back to restaurants. I hate going into restaurants and the food might be good, but your floors are nasty. Come on. Y'all don't even have uniforms. 
I could even get past y'all not having you. Where are you going? <laughs> I go where the food good though. Oh, the sugar shack. See. The sugar shack. You go where what? they all the seasoning is. You can't. What, okay. what I'm saying, but what I'm saying it's is like food. it's like you can't just sell me on my food good because just because your food good. If this is your business, yeah. your business needs to be together. Right. It needs to be together. But the only way they're going to know that is if people stop going there. And that's how, or, or if, if people start telling them yes, they start that getting it doesn't look right. Right. See, we also got to, we, okay, like Keila said, if people stop going. But guess what? Everything in that kitchen can be clean as hell. But they're just focusing on their kitchen. They're not focusing on the outside. But if people start telling them, hey, for real, your food good, but your host, your hostess or whatever, or your 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 front end is trash. Right. Focus on that. If if you know, if we start educating our business owners, giving feedback. Like, yo, fix your shit. Right. Like fix I know I'm sorry, Greg. Go ahead. <laughs> if we if we help each other, if we help each other by educating each other, hey, I like your food, but guess what? I don't want to eat here because of this. Right. If you can fix this, I can come and eat here more. Mm -hmm. You know, if 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 your candy shop was better, I would send my kids up here to get candy from your store more. Yeah, you just got to give that feedback. But but we have to be approachable as store owners. That's, That's what I was thing. Thing. Yeah, yeah you got to be right. Right. Not approachable not because that. people don't take feedback. Everybody and, and not not to not to right. say you just say everybody ain't Facebook. Not to say just black store owners or ethnic store owners, but it's more in the the black and ethnic store owner um areas where you can be like hey why is it sticky over here right. get what you want and get out dang who talking to you like that i don't even know where you eating where it's i don't want to go people around you are really the the stereotype. i got you i got you i got you stereotype right i feel you i feel you well yeah. you see, i I will say, um, for me, it's actually two. I have two pet peeves as a business owner, as a customer. Um, and I think maybe my pet peeves are um, biased, sort of. Uh, I, I will, I'm, and I, I agree with all of your input because I think all of your input to me leads to one particular issue, I feel. And I feel that. I think that everyone in one way, shape, form, or another is probably born with some sort of entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. There is something that you do unlike anyone else on this planet. Yeah. And then it's your job to hone into that thing that you do and make it great and appealable to the masses. I feel that I feel that everyone's born with a purpose and a and a and some sort of talent. I also say several times, and I've said this to people who have asked me to manage them, people who have asked me to consult, all of this stuff, is that I feel that there are three types of people on this planet. You have got your people who are sheer 100% creators of something. And to me, nine times out of 10, I'm talking about what I've encountered, nine times out of 10, those sheer creators don't necessarily have the correct business sense. They can create something out of nothing, but they do not have the baseline knowledge of how to execute business. And they need somebody for that. Mm -hmm. On the flip, you have some people who are um, analytical, business-minded individuals. They, not, they may not be able to create a damn thing. 
I can't color inside the lines if, if long enough if you give it to me because I need bored. But you got those people that can, that are very good at business and analyzing and consulting and seeing the bigger picture and so on and so forth. Very few people on this planet have both. And so I think that when we encounter those businesses that may have an amazing product that nobody knows about, it's because they have that, that, that um, ability to create, but they have not either, they either they have not reached out to anyone for assistance, they are not ready to receive that assistance, or they're artists and they're sensitive about their shit and they don't want to hear it. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah. and so what I, every time I have been pissed off at a business, not just black business, business is one, don't get your dumb ass on social media and blast your damn customer. Oh, I hate that. Ooh, I, ooh. What, what is your problem? Okay, I make ABC shirt. I keep pushing out this. I'm ABC company. Y'all don't support. My family don't support. My mm. blah, blah, blah. All under the umbrella of company ABC. Yeah. Dummy. Dummy. Oh, you, no, no, not, he's not ABC. <laughs> he's GMLA, totally different company. ABC. But I'm just saying, <laughs> why in the hell would you get on social media under your business umbrella and treat your customers like that and insult your possible future customers. Right. That's right. One. That's one. You've killed some of your own business. Right. Doing right. Yeah. Why? Why? Sometimes you need to sit down and just shut up. Let Facebook do whatever. You've got unfollow, unfriend, block, and delete. Why do you have to respond at all? As a business, you won't. When the last time you seen a multi-million dollar company respond to windows crashing all the time? No. We'll send an update. Thanks for the info. We're not get, they're not getting up there fussing at you specifically because you cussed them out. That's the business side that a lot of people just do not have. Right. But the flip of that is a lot of businesses don't realize all that information, though, is not going to come to you for free. I have a select amount of individuals that I will give. Look, I have a whole MBA. I will provide you a whole lot of my information for free if you really in my circle. But if you keep calling me for extensive amounts of advice, you're going to have to come up off some money because I still got student loans. <laughs> So you going to help me pay for the degree that I bought for us then. Amen. But then they don't, but the thing is businesses don't, they, not all, but I'm talking about all business, not just black. They don't want to invest. Right. You don't want to sit and invest $25 for me for an hour of consulting on your business because you want yours to be like mine. But you don't want to pay that. Okay. It's, it's a good. slap in my face. So those business. are my two, and, and I would say I agree with Keila when she says, tell them. Right. If something's wrong with the product, the business, the food, the facility, the whatever, tell them that yeah, something's that's wrong. Right. I don't care about the backlash. I told you the shirt is ugly. So don't be <laughs> mad three months from now when you're out of business because the shirt is ugly. Didn't yeah. I tell you that six months ago? Yeah. It's okay. I've done my job. I told you the shirt was ugly. And that's what yeah. happens with major corporations. Yes. That's why they do so well, because they're getting feedback and they welcome that feedback. Exactly. That's, that's what people don't understand. The bigger companies, they're getting that feedback and they're like, okay, this is what we've gotten on a survey. This is what we got from the emails. So now right. let's make the corrections. And not only well, do they, they have, have the survey. Uh, they have those focus groups as well. Oh, you have right. that, that provide what input focus group that provide input so that you can correct yourself. You know why? Because those multi million companies are ready to receive that information, they're also spending the money, and boom, and they're spending the money. 
So I think that you remember how we kept saying, well, I'm, I'm going to tie something in that Kavana actually said, you know, uh, saying that, you know, why do, why are we still having this conversation about the first black this, the first black mm -hmm. that, the first black that, and we should be away from that conversation. I think that we are not far enough yet to oh. get away from that conversation because, and, and this is why we have to keep having conversations like this, That's because we wa I want all businesses to some way, shape or form be successful, but they don't all have the right tools in their toolbox. So they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. So because a lot of businesses as a whole, not just black, but a lot of businesses as a whole are not there yet. Yes, I'm gonna go to Walmart and get that $5 thing that I'm not ready to pay $20 for and gamble on whether or not I'm gonna get a quality right. shirt, a quality item. I'll go get it so I can touch it, feel it. Yep, this is exactly what I wanted versus sometimes taking a gamble, whether it's a black business, whether you're buying a dress from China, eBay, Etsy, whatever. I think you take that gamble. <laughs> well, <no> Say <laughs> what? Wish? Wish? No. Wish? I, you know I, mean? I agree. Different. I totally agree with what you're saying, but what the the majority of what is being said out here about everybody wanting these black businesses, right? They want a black Walmart, right? But we got these black entertainers that are wealthy as fuck, right? They could all get together and make a Walmart instead of a Walmart. Oh, if they what? Oh, what? That's a big responsibility. <laughs> but the thing about it is, why? I mean, would but they really that? could though. But they probably the have the monetary means to do so. But if that's not something they want to do, then why? Exactly. Exactly. Right. But you can give me a million dollars. I'm not right. creating Walmart. I, that's not what I'm doing with my money. I think that people have to be authentic in what they're doing. I don't think that, you know, I think once again, like you're saying, education is so important. And like you said, um, Keela, as far as the focus groups, maybe that's another thing that needs to happen for small business to, to maybe create surveys and emails and things of that nature. But I think you have to be authentic. And I was listening to Brother Vance, you said a lot of great things th today. Thank you so much. And one of the things that I left with is, I just thought about tonight, your first brand is yourself. Your first brand is you. And if you don't know how to promote and produce you, then you're not gonna produce and promote anything else. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to understand the concept that self-love, that's loving yourself enough to promote yourself to places that you feel that you deserve to go. Then you can do the same with your kids, with your wife, your husband, your friends, your relationships. And I think I've always said balance and I've always said be authentic, but we cannot put people in places that they don't want to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always said this too, if it's in your heart, and I'm, not, I'm just using you as an example, um, Greg, but if it's in your heart about the black Walmart, then nine times out of 10, you're the person to do it. Because I feel like the people that have the greatest ideas are usually the ones that don't realize it at first, because that's how it came with me and motivational speaking. Disney is, also she's saying is I was that artist. I didn't have, I was, I'm creative. I didn't have that business knowledge. I didn't have that business understanding. And now she gave me all the business. Now I have workshops speaking in schools. I have a mission and it's amazing, but I had to get both of them together. And now I am a powerful force. So I think you Vance, because I really thought about, I was like, really your first brand and product is you. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, you have to figure out how to promote the brand of being you. And then it helps you promote everything else. Woo! I'll, I'll say see, this. Look, dude, look. I, and then, I, you, you just said, you look, said a mouthful preach. right there. That's look, I'm about to say, we ain't even got to do a roundabout. <laughs> I think Kavana, like, just summed up the whole show. Hey, hey, well, you know, I, we had a, hey this was a, a whole show full of mouthfuls, wasn't it? And there was some noodles, bro. I want to say this to what you said, Kavana, on, on, um, with the brand. 
and, and with your company. You, you got to know how to move within your company, what your company stands for, and if you need to be out in front of it. Mm. And let me let me uh, expound on that. I GMLA is what it is. Grind my life away. You grind your life away at your music. Uh, is doing the same thing with her shows. Uh, Keela's doing it with her wigs. Craig with you know his comedy. Everybody's grinding their life away. So myself, I didn't sell myself into the brand. I sold myself. I sold the brand into the people mm. um, because I was very, very aware of how people see things. We we look at things uh, visual, and I said to myself, "No, I'm not an old man, but I got a lot of gray hair." However, if I'm out in front of this all the time, I see yours coming in, Greg. But if I'm out in front of this, what do I tend to do? So what I, I had to sit back and say, how do I model my brand? And I model my brand with everybody. Um, when I started doing it, so it's like, is it me or is this brand everybody in the world? And that's why I push it to every race because I say I'm a black business owner, but this is not a black brand. Right. Um, I, I've had individuals call me and you you said something earlier about supporting and pushing social media and all these different things. And man, I used to get so worked up about that until I had someone call me one day when I actually put a few white people up in my in my shirts and say, wait a minute, I thought this was a black brand. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question, what type of shirt are you wearing? Polo, jeans, Levi's, shoes, Tim's. But I ain't seen your name come across my order yet for a GMLA shirt, so why you on the phone with me right now? And then, and there it is. So, but yet still, you want to look at me as a black owner and tell me what my brand is and what my, my brand belongs to Wow. But you don't own anything. You don't have anything to go with it. Now this same person would tell me, you know what, man, that's what I do. I grind my life away every day. But you ain't got no shirt. Wow. You wow. So, Come on here. Talk, you know, talk. So again, like you saying, yeah, you promote yourself, but I mean, like Keela's looked at my page or whatever. If you look at it, you'll see a whole bunch of people and you might see me in here and there, here and there. And I did that on purpose um, because I understand that there's a, a, a group of people that might go, well, he, he's an older guy, you know, that's, that's old folk thing or whatever the case may be. So I step away from it and let my brand speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And that's how I push it. Life doesn't so, happen by accident. It happens on purpose. That's right. Life doesn't happen on accident. It happens on purpose. Most I need to get your Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, uh, this has been a long show because I'm looking at the time. I know. I'm sorry. It's been a long show. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up and we are going to say, uh, I'm a, what, was, what was Cabana's word? You must be authentic. Yes. And you, mu you have must remember, you are your own brand first. If you first. give me the give me the excellence, do the excellence, and that's gonna be the end of the show. What's your excellence statement? Black excellence, something before be great, so they don't deny. Oh. I don't want to say it. I want you to say it. Oh <laughs> yes. So you are your own brand, and it starts with you. So be so great that no one can can deny you at all. Walk in your truth, walk in your power, walk in your humanity, walk in grace, walk in favor, walk in abundance. There's nothing that can stop you. Keep the faith. Be so great that they cannot deny you. Mm. And that's Don't what you got business. to say. Don't be a black business. Be a bomb ass business. Be a what bomb. What you got to say. <laughs> Peace, y'all.